A Glimpse into the Past, highlights from the photographic collection at the Irish Jewish Museum. A selection of ran random images of Jewish life in Ireland from one of the many albums in our collection currently being catalogued at the museum. With grateful acknowledgement to the Heritage Council for a generous grant for our new website development and for their support for the museum's digitizing photographic project, which enables us to share these images. We begin with an older photograph of Walworth Road Synagogue. Originally two family homes in the Jewish quarter of Portobello, the upstairs synagogue had been in use since 1917. When the synagogue ceased to be used, it was left exactly as it had been and became the home for the Irish Jewish Museum in 1985. An exhibition of Irish Jewish artifacts and memorabilia was developed in the downstairs area. One of the first volunteers, Raphael Siv, is seen here speaking with the collection, about the collection. The exhibition attracted much attention and was well received by the general public. These ladies were curious to see who they could find in the picture of the Girl Guides. The museum was officially opened by Israeli President Haim Herzog while on its state visit to Ireland in 1985. President Herzog grew up in Ireland and his father, Reverend Dr. Itzhak Herzog, was Chief Rabbi of Ireland until 1937 before becoming the first Chief Rabbi of Palestine. President Patrick Hillary and his wife greeting President Herzog and Mrs. Aura Herzog in Dublin, 1985. Adelaide Road Synagogue was the first purpose-built synagogue in Ireland, built in 1892 to accommodate the burgeoning new population of Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe. The beautiful interior of the synagogue was much loved by generations of Irish Jews. The choir at Adelaide Road with the choir master, Philip Modell. The Ladies' Gallery in Adelaide Road was filled with excitement when President Herzog gave an address there on his visit to Dublin in 1985. President Herzog attending a religious service at Adelaide Road. Behind him one can see Chief Rabbi Ephraim Mervis. Greenville Hall Synagogue, home of the Dublin United Hebrew Congregation, officially opened in 1916. The focal point of the interior was the magnificent Ark, which housed the Sefer Burt Torah, or Scrolls of the Law. Another view of the interior showing the domed Ark. A closer view with the near Tamid, or everlasting life, light, and the Ten Commandments in front of the dome. When the synagogue was finally closed, the ark was dismantled and stored away for many years. It has recently been completely restored by the museum through the works of the Institute of Technology's Letterfrack National Centre for Excellence in Furniture and Design. The present Cherenier Synagogue was opened in 1953, following a movement of the Jewish population further south from Portobello. A photograph of some of the committee members in their silk top hats on the occasion of the opening of the synagogue. And another at the same occasion. An image of a Siddur prayer book, a Yad painter, and a Talit prayer shawl commonly used in religious practice. An open Torah, the central, central focus in religious services. Blowing the shofar at a Rosh Hashanah Jewish New Year service. The installation of a commemoration stone to those killed in the Shoah or Holocaust. And to them I will give in my house and within my wall 
an everlasting memorial. The first Jewish school was Zion Schools, established in 1934 on Bloomfield Avenue. Up to then, ch Jewish children attended various local national schools. Zion Schools merged with Stratford College in Rathgar in 1980. Stratford School remains as a national Jewish primary and secondary school today, providing education from kindergarten through leaving certificate. There were many communal organizations over the years. The Women's Zionist Organization in Ireland, known as WITSA, was founded in 1900. Regular fundraising activities took place, this one at the Mansion House in 1958. Some of the committee members of WITSA in 1948, the year the State of Israel was established. The Dublin Daughters of Zion, Israeli Afternoon with Bob Briscoe in 1956. At a Women's Committee meeting. Bertha Weingreen cuts the cake for Ziona's 25th anniversary with the ladies. Her husband, Professor Jacob Weingreen, author of the classical Hebrew grammar, can be spotted to the right of the photo. The Dublin Jewish Girls Club, 1916 to 1917. The Jewish National Fund Bazaar Committee in 1932. The Jewish National Fund's Blue Box. The Hanukkah Parade at Adelaide Road Synagogue for the Scouts and Girl Guides, 1979. Lighting the candles of the menorah at the parade. Diane Zalman Aloni presiding. A family Seder service at Passover in Harl's Cross, 1939. Portobello Nursing Home staff in 1948 with Drs. Abrahamson, Robinson and Bethel Solomons Center. At the Polo Grounds in the Phoenix Park, Dublin. Carlisle Rugby Team, 1957. The Old Crocs Match, 1960. Carlisle Tennis Club around 1920 or 1921. Tennis off the court, 1921. The Jewish Boxing Club Committee, 1936. Belfast and Dublin Jewish Golfing Committees meeting at the Metropole Hotel Dublin, 1939. Mendelstein at the Maccabi Sports Club, 1982. A Soviet Jewry movement emerged in the late 1970s in response to the Soviet Union's Jewish policy 
which was seen as a violation of basic human and civil rights, including freedom of immigration, freedom of religion, and the freedom to study one's own language, history, and culture. Irish Jews were actively involved in campaigning and organized demonstrations and human rights walks, which gained support and attracted attention to the plight of Soviet Jews. Since the 1900s, the Dublin Jewish Dramatic Society played a role in Irish and Yiddish theatre. The cast of this play continued that tradition. A production of Gilbert and Sullivan's Trial by Jury in the 1930s. By the Dublin Jewish Choral Society. And an early photo showing the pupils in Miss Doris Slotover's ballet class. The Habonim Israeli Dublin dancers under the direction of Jack Bloomfield. Eminent Dublin-born artist Gerald Davis. Gerald Davis at work in his studio in Capel Street. Besides being an artist, he was a dedicated Joycean. Professor of music and pianist Dinah Copeman meeting with Chief Rabbi David Rosen about 1980. Heimann Edelstein, 1889 to 1957, poet and scholar, born in Dublin, emigrated to Canada in 1912. Charles Hawhey with filmmaker Louis Marcus. David Marcus, renowned author and literary editor, founder of Poetry Ireland Journal and the New Irish Writing Page in the Irish Press. Taoiseach Jack Lynch with Marilyn Taylor, author of 17 Martin Street and Far Away Home, and wife of Labour politician Minister Mervyn Taylor. Rabbi Brown from Lombard Street Synagogue. Joseph Edelstein, eccentric character, secretary of the short-lived Judeo-Irish Home Rule Association and author of The Moneylender. Rabbis from Ireland, including Diana Loney, Chief Rabbi Jakobowicz and Rabbi Theodore Lewis at the Zionist Council reception in the 1950s. President Patrick Hillary with Judge Herman Good, who was president of the Dublin Hebrew Congregation at the time. Robert Briscoe became the first Jewish Lord Mayor of Dublin in 1956. He had been a member of the Fianna Aaron in his youth. A champion of Irish freedom, he had been serving on Dublin Corporation for almost 35 years. His son, Ben Briscoe, born in 1934, served as a TD for 37 years and was elected Lord Mayor of Dublin in 1988. Louis Elliman and his wife, Etty. The distinguished Elliman family were at the helm of Ireland's theatrical and cinematic life throughout the 20th century, most notably involved with the Theatre Royal in Dublin. President Carol O'Dolly presenting Professor Cornelius Langtros, world-renowned mathematician and physicist, with a portrait in his honour. Professor Langtros began working at the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies in 1950. 
Joseph Isaacson, President of the King Solomon Lodge of the Freemasons. Morris and Rose Leventhal, both born in Russia, married in Dublin, 1894, parents of Khan Leventhal. Solomon Leventhal and Percy Diamond. Colonel Dr. Asher Leventon, a commander of the Order of the Indian Empire. Captain Julius Leventon, born 1875, dental surgeon. Their father, Rabbi Israel Leventon, who served the Dublin community in Mary's Abbey, as well as Adelaide Road, as minister and scribe, died 1899. Louis Wigadere son of Myra Joel Wigader, who arrived from Lithuania in 1891 in his Masonic regalia. His brother, Harry Wigader, opened the first Wigader shop on Talbot Street in 1901. A keen athlete, he was founder of the Adelaide Football Club. This picture was taken in 1913. We returned to the Irish Jewish Museum on Bloomsday. With the cutout of the artist Gerald Davis dressed as Leopold Bloom are Senator David Norris, Marilyn Taylor and Raphael Silk. Thank you for joining the Irish Jewish Museum's brief glimpse into our photographic collection. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. <laughs>